Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. Hey, Washington. Delta Dental is on a mission. Our state has a lot to smile about, and we think those smiles should be healthy and bright. That's why our Tooth Fairies taught over 30,000 kids the importance of dental care. Whether it's in the classroom or online, they make good habits stick and spread a little magic along the way with free programs, parent resources, and, of course, toothbrushes. The Tooth Fairy experience is helping us get closer to being 100% cavity-free. Learn more at CavityFreeWA.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a random dude who I guess was feeling like he was, uh, I don't know, looking for action, looking for a fight. So he wanted to go a few rounds with a boxing coach from Florida. Dude, uh, I, I watched the video of this this morning. And, and then the, on the video, the boxing coach gives a full, a full explanation saying that this guy drove an hour wanting to fight him. And said that he just got out of prison or he's been in and out of prison. He has anger issues and needs to just handle it in the ring and wants to train. But in order for him to train, he wanted to first fight the guy. Okay, so it looks like he, he's like a guy in like his maybe late forties, maybe fifties. So he gets out of prison, yeah, and he wants to. He goes and he 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 goes to this boxing coach Dorian, like you said, drives and says, "I'm going to fight you." Uh, and Dorian's like, "Look, man, uh, I, I'm we're not going to fight right now. I just had surgery." Yeah. So the the guy out of prison uh, got pretty rude with him and called him the p word, or his coach and, called it. He said he called me a kitty cat. Yeah, <laughs> me out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so then Dorian's like, all right, let me teach you a little bit of a lesson right here. And uh, this is how this all went down. You all right? All good. I'm sure you want to continue. You step into the wrong gym. Your uh, street attitude is going to get you hurt in the boxing gym. What? This work. You can't just come up to a boxing gym and want to challenge a coach. You have to be humble when you walk in a boxing gym. Come on, get up. I'm going to give you a chance to throw punches at me. Let me see what you got. Tough guy. Ain't tough. Hands up because I'm gonna hit you now. I know Hands you Hands up, I'm gonna hit you. Hands up. 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 Hands Oh, I'm wow. Fresh off of hip surgery, and this guy's just working the dude. And I just love all those big grunts you hear are body shots that he's throwing at this guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking this, this so called, hey, I'm going to show you, is taking a beating from a, a just recovering from hip surgery professional guy here. When he says, I'm going to hit you now, my first reaction was, no, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. No, no, dude, cool. And the video goes on. It's like about three minutes long. And it's, I, I thought, oh, I'm just going to quickly watch. I sat there in just awe because, yeah, he's like, I'm going to hit you now. Put your hands up. And the guy put his hands up and he still wrecks the guy. You know, he yeah. put on his YouTube page, he says he's a bully that needed to be humbled. And then yeah. says, All right, if you want to have your kid join youth boxing and learn how not to be bullied, go to I was like, right? what a yeah. perfect infomercial on how to handle a bully. Yeah, definitely. And again, he's not even trying. You know what I mean? You, you can see from the video that he's not really wanting to hurt the guy. If he really wanted to hurt the guy, oh, man. Dude, a uh, YouTube comment actually summed it up great, saying respect to the coach for not really hurting him, but at the same time, really hurting him. Right. Because it's like oh, yeah. he's hurting him enough 
but not to harm him. He's yes. just like, you know, he's hitting him hard enough that he's like, this this does not feel good, but knowing that he's not going to put any like permanent damage to the guy. Except Which his is, ego is shot forever. Deservingly so. Yes. And he pr- and he probably got some bumps and bruises like, "Oh man, this is not pleasant." That's the that's the that's the amazing thing about this guy is that like the uh, that like the commenter said, yeah. it's like, "Yeah, you hurt him enough that he was like, "Whoa, I uh, please stop." But at the same time, no permanent and bad injury. Oh, imagine what he could have done if he just let loose. He would have wrecked that guy. I thought the coach was probably just like, you know, walking around on a crutch, just doing what he does at work, trying to like, you know, make a living and then some random guy comes into his gym saying, I need. I have anger issues. I've been in and out of jail, and he's like, "Okay, I can work with a guy like this." But in order to come to your gym, I need to fight you first. And he's just like, "What's wrong with you, dude?" And it's a lot of you know. And this is something that people don't understand. His the the one comment he made is, "You got to come in here with humility." You know, you don't yep. just come in. You know, you and that is. I mean, you, you you see that in the martial arts world. Anything at all that involves this kind of really competition uh, is not just about beating the crap out of people. It really is about like getting to the getting to the deeper part of yourself and learning how to be a humble, respectful, honoring human being. And that's when and they just do it through these practices: boxing, martial arts. A lot of folks don't get that. They think, oh, this is a violent thing. I wouldn't want my kid involved. But in reality, it might be some of the best things you can do for your child to have them involved in a professional situation like this. I have one person says. Dude went in looking for a fight. Coach gave him a lesson. Great work, coach. Yeah. I mean, the military can do that to people as well. People that got attitudes and they just turn them around and go, oh, you, you got an attitude? And they teach you how to actually really be a good human being in a way that, you know, uh, speaks to the language of some of these people. You know, some of these bullies. That bully, you know what, now if he really wants to turn his life around, he's in the right place. You know, now that he realizes he's got a lot yeah. of work to do. I wonder if he will go back. You know, I mean, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know what? I needed that. Or is it he's going to just go off to the next place and try and be a bully again? I've, I've had that happen to me, not obviously in the physical world, but I've had people verbally put me in my place and then, you know, sit me down and go, look, you know what? Do you want to learn how to be a good human being and and, you know, use these words in a different way? And it's like, all right, you know, so I've I've had mentors that have basically slapped me around a little bit, you know, and. And taught me that uh, I was kind of being a bully and and then also that I didn't know as much as I thought. I do love that. He taught him also a valuable uh, lesson about insult to injury. Because he's like, he knocks him out and then ends it with, I just had hip surgery. Like, yes. (laughs) Talk Mm -hmm. about. (laughs) It's a perfect, I mean, that is a perfect lesson. You don't want me after I'm fully healed. Because you know, I would think a dude getting out of prison was pretty tough and could pretty much handle himself. And he he, he could not handle himself at all uh, uh, to, uh, to this professional. That's... I love that. That's a, that's the video of the year right there. Oh, it's a fun watch. I mean, if you definitely want to watch, if you if you ever had dealt with a bully, it's fun to watch to see how this guy just got dismantled. So, Steve, yes, uh, big news for you, sir. Turns out there's a, a musical biopic that's uh, in the works called Shout It Out Loud, and it's going to be about your boys. Oh, shout, shout, shout it out. These are the things. I'm kidding. Of course, yeah. it's Kiss. Yeah. It's like, Tears for fears. Tears for uh, fears. What? I've been waiting for this rock. Bo- Dude, I saw this this morning, and I was just like, you know what? I never even thought how how great of a document or a great movie that would be. Not just a documentary, but like oh, actual, sure, like a biopic of their story because it's a great story of like that a bunch of like you know guys in New York that just trying to make it. People looked at them like they were just insane for doing the makeup stuff, and they became the biggest rock band, one of the biggest rock bands in the world. I really want to see the. I, I hope they get into the the thought process and 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 the way Gene Simmons handled the business of it all because it seems like he's a, he's a brilliant guy when it comes to business. You know, he's always made these moves that has put him in a position to be relevant mm-hmm. and put and 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 keep that band going and 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 keep the money train going as well. He's it he seems like Gene's got a great head for business, and I hope they explore that. See, for me, I would just love to see the early days of them just being like these kids in New York that got together. Cause it is a, yeah, that would be fun, too, yeah. The, 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 the duo of Gene and Paul, I mean, it, it seems like they were just perfect for each other because, like you said, like Gene seemed very business and, and and Paul was more of like just like, you know, he wanted to just be a rock star. He was wanting to be an artist and a rock star and, and clearly accomplished it. Uh, but it would be... I think it'll be a fun watch. It's a great collaboration, you know, because there you got the guy who wants to be the performer, and then you got the other guy who definitely has a head for business. 
uh, which is what great art needs. You know, to have a successful art form like they had, you got to have great performance and you got to have great business. And those two seem to really have that going. And then the two loose cannons, that's Ace and Peter. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to have those guys. <laughs> right. Too. I hope they include uh, your interview with Peter Chris in this whole movie. I oh, mean, that I'm, would be fantastic. <laughs> recreate that moment. That's a short uh, clip. You don't have to worry about it. And Vicky, you might want to watch long. it. Uh, the director of the Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, is doing it. Uh, I think that was yeah. the last Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, movie. sorry. I is guess that a good one or is that like the one that we don't speak of? <laughs> yeah. How about Maleficent? Uh, Mr. Okay. Evil. He did that one too. Uh, Yoshim Roni uh, is going to be the director. Uh, and, and there's going to be a lot of close cooperation from Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. So they are heavily involved with this, which is good. Uh, because if Gene signs off on it and Paul sign off on it, at least then we can know that they like the film. Uh, How much do you have to pay Gene to sign off on it? <laughs> <laughs> if like, you go to kissonline.com, I will sign it. Yeah, he's uh, like, you want me to sign this? It needs to be six zeros. <laughs> Uh, and you know, Steve, you're going to be happy because it will focus on Gene and Paul pretty much going back to when they were two, just, you know, kids, two kids from Queens and, and they just decided to, you know, they had this unlikely friendship and next thing you know, they started kiss and they got ace and they got Peter involved and that's what they're going to focus on. Jeez, man, they could do like multiple. I mean, as a kiss fan, obviously that then, then you're really just narrowing your focus. I mean, if you want to make it mass appeal, a, a movie will be perfect. You, you can probably sum it all up in about two hours, but man, there's just so many different like phases of Kiss from like taking the makeup off that whole time, like the the, yeah. the the lineup changes to the reuniting and bringing back the makeup. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. It, it, it should make for a really cool story, even if you're not a Kiss fan. Yeah, so the film is being done, and and Netflix is close to saying, yeah, we want to run it, So, uh, which is going to be great for all of us folks that have Netflix, if that's the case. And I heard, I was reading something like where they're going to try and, if everything works out well, obviously we're in a weird state of like concerts and and you know with the pandemic and stuff but like they're hoping that they could maybe coincide with the the because kiss is doing that final tour that's going to last forever so they got plenty of time yeah but they want to like that'd be kind of cool if maybe like netflix gets like footage from the concerts and like makes like a concert special to go along with the movie nice I'll you know what if they don't have that in there they got to talk to you because you've got the uh, you're the idea man at this point oh when it comes to kiss i'm a full, full of them <laughs> Yeah. Or full of it. <laughs> full of it. That's what, yeah, that's what's going on. <laughs> what movie, I, I'm trying to think of like what other movie about a band would you like to see? Like the story of a band that like you just would love to see, not as a documentary, but as an actual film. Black Sabbath. Ooh. Ooh. Good call. I just want All to right. see more of Ozzy. The Ozzy stuff would be pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, it, it would be very, very crazy because, you know, um, I wonder if Sharon was a Yoko at all in that situation, in, in any of Ozzy's work. You know, we, we have, we've never heard that, but we also know that Sharon, I mean, in some cases, he's like Sharon's been very involved in keeping Ozzy just, you know, uh, on the right track and, and from a business there and point yeah, standpoint. Right. You know, and obviously they had a, I mean, he try. I mean, at one point he was so high and out of his mind, he tried to kill her. Uh, you know, right. so what, what a story. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, that would be a great story. And they would always say there's two different Aussies. There's Ozzy when Sharon's not around, and there's Ozzy when Sharon is around. Like Motley Crue said, the tour was completely different when Sharon was there as opposed to when it, when she wasn't because he just was like balls out crazy when she wasn't around. I feel like it needs to be the sequel to The Dirt and mm -hmm. just have the guy who played Ozzy. I think Tony Cavallaro. That guy was great. Yeah, like have him play Ozzy and just kind of make it like a sequel in a sense. So, so okay. I, my first All thought right. was maybe like Nirvana, but I'm like, man, that that, that could be a real like that could be a hard watch, you know, yeah. because there's so much tragedy that goes along with that. So I was trying to think of like what would be be like more of like a, f a fun party type of a like movie. And I was thinking like the Beastie Boys, like the early days oh, of the dude. Beastie Boys, Hell being, yeah. uh, these punk rock kids. I know they did a documentary, but an actual movie about it to them somehow going on tour, opening for Madonna, even though they were just not that. They should oh, not have. How crazy was that? And then like when they all of a sudden made the switch to, from being a party rap group to actually, you know, trying to make some more uh, uh i guess artistic artistically respected music yeah that's a good call yeah that's a very very good call i was thinking orgy uh, not orgy <laughs> but but within that same sort of like universe it would be kind of focusing i feel like on limp biscuit uh, oh man but like yeah but just that whole new metal scene because you would have cameos from all these crazy bands that were out there and a lot of like you know like slipknot well hell even just doing a slipknot movie there you too go. would be amazing but like limp biscuit like created helped create a genre and it's still kicking around today so i would be really interested to see like the early days of all that fun ridiculousness the textures said one i completely didn't even think it went over my head but you're absolutely right guns and roses Oh, yeah. oh wow! Yeah, I mean, like they said, that would be very much like the dirt. It would be 
and it would be intense. And that, there's so much to go with with, with Guns N' Roses. I'll tell you right now, they've got a terrific writer, or at least somebody they can collaborate with, because Duff, if you've seen any of his writing, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and that would be amazing to get him to sit down and just put that all together from his recollection and all of that. And, and the things that he, he had to, you know, because he was very instrumental in getting them back together again. Um, that would be amazing, but that would be a hell of a, yeah, I would, I would want to watch that too. Speaking of Duff, and I did not know this until a couple of days ago, but they just released, he had a band before he, he left Seattle and went off to, you know, be playing bass in Guns N' Roses. He had a band called The Living. It was a punk rock band. It had him and some other guys, including Greg Gilmore, who became the drummer of Mother Love Bone. They were a Seattle based punk rock band and they just put out their, their record that they made back in like 1982. Whoa. And I listened to it. Dude, it is a fun listen. If you love punk, like real just scratchy, old school type of punk rock, not pop punk, but just like just straight up punk. I mean, it's, it's catchy, don't get me wrong, but it's raw and it's great. I was just like, this is such a cool little time capsule of Duff McKagan's life that I didn't even realize. Like I heard about the living, but I never heard their music. And now you, it's on all the streaming services. You can listen to it on YouTube, EJ. That's very cool. Yeah, it's called The Living, and the album's called 1982. It's crazy because it's seven songs, and it's 15 minutes long. That's punk rock. <laughs> seven songs and 15 minutes long. Every You're song is right. two minutes or less. Oh, that is so funny. Oh, that's awesome. We got he a was guy, 15 when he, when he made that He band. was 15? Yeah. What? It's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, well, that's why this would be a great story just to look at their their life because Duff has been very. Re- if you've read anything that Duff has done, he's been very reflective, and uh, he re- he wrote a book, right, Steve? I know I've read. I think yeah. he. Yeah, Duff, Duff put out I think a couple books actually. That's what I thought. So reading some of Duff's works, it's like whoa, he it's really awesome to have him remember exactly what was going on, but you know, you know, be reflective of where he is right now when he wrote the book. You know, the time of his life. I think this would be, man, that would be cool. That would be very very cool. We got a guy that did something very epic and perfect with the ashes for his father. You're going to hear from him at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's this guy in Illinois. His name is John, and he did a pretty cool thing. Uh, He wanted to pay tribute to his deceased father. And, um, boy, he did it in a big way. He bowled a perfect 300 game using a ball that contained some of his dad's ashes. That is a very creative way to, like, you know, keep the ashes of a loved one. Is, is to put it in something that you use like that. Uh, it would be, I'm sure his dad was also a big bowler, but it would be kind of funny if his dad wasn't. It's just random. He's just like, I just need some good luck, so I'm going to put my dad's ashes in my bowling ball. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound low, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. We all remember that one professor, the one everyone on campus had to take no matter what subject they taught because how much fun their class was. What if we told you there was a streaming service that had all those professors? One Day University has every must-have professor from the best colleges all across the country. One Day University, the most fun talks from the most fun professors. Available live and on demand. No homework, just the most fun you'll have while learning. Get a special offer at onedayu.com slash odyssey. Have we figured out how to explain deja vu? How do chameleons do that thing they do? Do you really need to wash your blue jeans? Yeah, you do, but how often? Hey, my name's Mike Simpson. I've got a podcast about curiosities. It's called I've Got Questions. We go through my list of random stuff and yours. Please participate. Send me your questions. I'll find someone to answer them. We've talked about our true crime obsession, how grocery stores are tricking us, super secret flight attendant stuff. I've got questions. New episodes Thursdays on Odyssey or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, his father had been an avid bowler. You're right, Steve. Uh, As a matter of fact, his dad was the one that introduced him and his brother to the sport of bowling. And uh, this was his first. How about this? This was John's first time using the ball since adding his father's ashes to it. And he bowled a 300 game with it. How insane is that? 
I was talking to my brother earlier in the night. I go, I'm shooting at 300 tonight with this ball. <laughs> he goes, do it. Dad always shot 298, 299, never had a 300. Oh, wow. So now Dad had one in a way. Yeah. It, whoa, dude, that's it, uh, that's just insane. Does it say where the ashes are? Like, did he drill a hole in the ball or something? Like, like how does that work? Or do you like you use like it like as like a, a paint or something? That's I figured a really it was good in question. resin, but who knows? Yeah, that is an excellent question, Steve. Because I feel I feel like it's it says this is his first time using it since adding his father's ashes. Right. So it was a um, ball that he had. Looking up, it looks like he had the thumb hole of the bowling ball filled with his father's ashes because he has a two handed technique that doesn't use that. Oh, hole. he doesn't need the thumb hole. Yeah. Oh, that's whoa. really cool. Yeah. Right. Wow. And you know, no one's going to really take that ball because I was trying to find a ball and I can't put my thumb in the hole. I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so he has this two-handed technique, and again, it's the first time using the ball since his his ashes. So he uh, this is this is nuts that he just has his technique that he's used. Wow, mm-hmm. his wow. Uh, only because I bowled, you know, I, I used to bowl a lot back in my younger days. So this is pretty wild, and, and to me, and John believes his father was there in spirit to witness this him rolling a three hundred. I had tears in my eyes for eleventh and twelfth frame. I couldn't even tell you where that last ball went. I just was hoping that it would strike, and it did. I had goosebumps, chills. I, it was he was there. This was the best one. This is by far the best, and I, it was definitely the hardest one because, I mean, I was shaking. Man, that's well, amazing. This, this is nuts because I'm I'm watching the video of how he's and he he has a two handed method, which I I don't know how he's able to get the accuracy. Right. And there is some there are some parts where he's got such a spin on the ball, it looks like he's throwing it into yeah. the gutter, but he's able to get it to go right to the pocket. Wow. Just hearing uh, that story kind of gave me goosebumps. It's such, such a cool feel-good story. Like, there's yeah. a great way to pay tribute to your pops. And, yeah, man, I'm, I don't know what's more impressive, the whole Ashes thing, the perfect score, or how he throws the damn ball. Because you're right. Like, so I'm watching strange. it. He's got both hands on the ball, and he, like, wings it. Yeah, which is, you know, obviously, you want to put a spin on the ball, usually, so that it will, you know, and, and, and it'll spin right to the pocket and hit it in the right way. Plus, that spin will really give a lot of pin action. And he's doing it with two hands, which I I don't know. I don't know how he's able to pull that off. Uh, but he pulls it off, and I mean, I don't know how good his game is normally, but, Good enough man. that he could get a 300, though. I know. I mean, <laughs> that, 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 and I I've never that, accidentally uh, stumbled into a 200 game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really. That's insane. Um. Well, I. What a great. What a, a story would be if he goes to the PBA, the Pro Bowls, you know, and, and goes to Pro Bowls tour and and just. I mean, he starts like kicking ass. Are there rules against how you hold the ball? I don't believe so. But there may be mm-hmm. rules about the kind of ball you use. Like I don't know about drilling the thumb hole and filling it up. If that would be considered an illegal ball in tournament play, that I don't know. Uh, but I think you can throw the ball any way you want as long as you don't go over the line. Uh, you know, you just have to stay behind a certain line when you release it. So one texture says, I use the same two-hand, no-thumb method as well. I get a wicked spin and better accuracy for that. Well, I used to do the two-handed thing when I was a kid, but that was just like right through my legs kind of a thing. Granny bowling. Yeah. 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 Granny bowling. That's what I do. Sadly, I think I had more accuracy that way than how I bowl now. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, wow, that's... Good for him, man. And uh, I, I look forward to see uh, if this guy could keep it up. I mean, 300 is definitely, you know, it's an amazing game. But, I, you know, how long can he do that? Our buddy Photog Jim just texted and saying, I wonder if the ashes cause a, the bowling ball to become illegal because of the odd weight distribution. Mm-hmm. You know, that's in the world good, of like that's the, a good question. In the, in probably in like the professional level, they'd be, they'd, they'd at least raise an eyebrow, I bet, to something like that. Like, hey, wait a second. Yeah. Even though really, what is it? The ashes, what does that even weigh? Yeah, I, I, these are all really great questions. I mean, obviously for fun, it's awesome. But yeah, I, I don't know professionally how how far he could go with that ball. But there's got to be a way to make a bowling ball that would be legal that you still could have ashes in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I guess if you if you felt like that mojo would be helping you and his dad never having bowled a 300 game in his life, but then his ball that he was residing in bowled a 300 game. So it says if you don't use the thumb hole, it needs to be plugged. And he did plug it. And he did plug it, so yeah. Next text, so you guys still talking about bowling balls, right? Probably. Yeah. Thought yeah. so. Like, but, plug, you know. plug the thumb hole. <laughs> yeah. You never know with us. Right? Yeah, we, you know, we, we're not expert enough in a lot of subjects, so uh, well, this is why we can speak ignorantly about everything. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hulu has announced uh, something that I don't know if we're going to want or not. Uh, they've given a 10-episode series order to a show called How I Met Your Father, which is a sequel series to How I Met Your Mother 
And See, when all these people bitch about Hollywood not coming up with creative ideas. This is a perfect example of them being wrong. They should all just suck it and quit bitching. <laughs> and uh, so the, the <laughs> TED part, uh, the TED part will go to uh, Hillary Duff, basically, where she will be the one telling her son how she met her father. That's huh. what the, uh, and, and, and it was, what did Hillary do? What do we know her from? Music. Uh, she did music and she did the that one show, Lizzie McGuire. On oh, Disney. that's yeah, that's how I know Hillary Duff. I, yeah, I mean, I know she's she done Mike Comrie, a former NHL player. They oh, were, they all were right. married for a little bit. Oh, all right. Well, that, that, that's good for her. So she's getting back into good acting. For her, good for her. She had a hockey guy in her life. Um, I, the, 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 the problem is, I have such a sour taste in my mouth with how they ended. How I met your mother. That I'm now thinking, do I want to watch a show? Knowing, like, well, well, the ending could be so bad. What if they say we won't disappoint you like the uh, How I Met Your Mother? Do you trust them? I don't have Hulu, and this is not going to get me to get Hulu. So, <laughs> oh, okay. That, <laughs> no, that, I'm not. That's what it is. Um, Fair enough. I'm I mean, I don't understand why we need a show, a remake of a show that just, I mean, okay, it's been several years, but it hasn't been decades. Well, Hulu needs something. I mean, all these streaming services need content because, uh, you know, the, the Disney pluses of the world keep raising the bar by spending millions and millions of dollars on one show. It's, and, and that's, I read an article today that Netflix may have a hard time because the amount of money that some of these other streaming services like Paramount Plus and Disney Plus are pumping into their own streaming apps is making it to, like Netflix is like, look, we could give you crappy movies once in a while. It doesn't cost that. Yeah. Much. Here's Thunder Force. Yeah. I mean, we, they, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> Yeah, we, we paid Adam Sandler a lot of money, but he's going to put out, what, a movie every five minutes. You know, I mean, so it's, it's, we're getting a value, but it's hard to compete. Like, you know, we're watching these WandaVisions and Falcons and Winter Soldier. And Steve, these are movies on television. Yeah. I mean, the amount of budget they put into it is just insane. And the Hulus of the world are like, well, we got to do something. We got to, we got to figure it out. So this is what they're doing. They're basically giving us remakes of shows, hoping that people will get their service. Well, I mean, just go with something older again. When are we going to make a reboot of Small Wonder? I mean, you did Punky Brewster. That seemed to okay. do pretty well for Peacock. I, think, uh, I think Hulu I think, needs yeah. to do Small Wonder. I might. Would subscribe. you really subscribe yes. to Hulu? You would for 100%. Small Wonder. Absolutely. Oh my God, you're the only human being I've ever met that likes that. I mean, show. I feel like I would be a letdown to my own like morals and, and and ethics if I don't do it. I need to at least. I need. I need to. Oh, you this is where you're going you, to get rid of your hypocrisy. This is your line. This, this is would the be hill, this. the hill you're going to die on. Well, I don't necessarily want to die on it, BJ, but I, but I'm willing to drop a couple bucks and watch, and then I'd cancel immediately after that. There oh, you go. Of course you no, would. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Although yeah, so, I did see uh, that they just announced that Cobra Kai is coming back for sure for season four. Well, they need it, don't they? You always hope. Well, this is Netflix, right? Yes. Yeah, they have to. I mean, they they, they have to. They they know that's a hit. I mean, Netflix has got to bring back these shows because, again, the the the, the competition. Somebody, I I read this article that probably in I don't know a few years Disney Plus is going to have more subscribers than Netflix, which I can't believe is even possible. I you totally know, I would, believe that's possible, though. I would, well, I would never thought it was possible. You know what I mean? If you told me that any other service could come out and beat Netflix, I wouldn't have thought that you know, like they would until, of course, I saw the amount of money that Disney was putting into their new shows. Yeah, when does Disney ever F around with anything? You're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, I, you know, but you know, you know, you just don't know if they were really going to go big. But a big part of it is that Disney's spending ridiculous money. Mickey's a fierce competitor. He's not he going to really let is. someone else beat him. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's insane. And, um, and so, Cobra Kai looks like it's going to be sometime at the end of 2021. So sometime at the end of this year. And that's when uh, that's when supposedly uh, we're going to... Well, let me see. Um, well, the, actually, the, the How I Met Your Father takes place in the year 2021. Don't know when it's going to be released. So, hey, it's taking place right now. And how are they going to even... Are they just going to take the, the same model, model of How I Met Your Mother and just change it with a dad? Yeah, Seems and like that. she's going to have a close-knit group of friends figuring out who they are, what they want out of life, and how to fall in love in the age of dating apps and limitless options. One texture says, had any to remake Greatest American Hero? Starring Steve Miggs. Nice. In. As long as they have that song. No. Hey, someone said, I love Small Wonder. I watched it when I was young, like five years old. It was very comforting. Well, yeah, I did too when I was like five, but I but yeah, but also Steve don't want five. Yeah, and I also don't want to see it come back. Well, someone said oh. it could be great with special effects and think about Vicky trying to fall in love. I agree with Steve. Vicky's okay, the name good. of the robot. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you two yeah. will be the ones actually watching that show. Three. Another text of Vicky the robot was awesome. Okay. LOL. Yeah, fine. Man, have you ever even <laughs> given it a shot? Yes. 
That's why I, I, I yes, I, but of course I was oh an God. older man. I was in my, yeah. what, probably my 20s, I think mid 20s. Like, why am I watching this pile? I didn't know it sure. had four seasons. That's what I'm saying, Rev. Yeah. Jesse, one person says I only like it because Jesse Ventura made a guest appearance. That might be part Did of it. Did he really? I don't remember that, but it I'm, had more seasons than Star Trek, the original series. That is the travesty of the whole thing. Oh, that is. No, because yes, it was is. a better show. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, it's a small yeah, wonder. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I know Paramount Plus. Uh, they launched an entire app based on Small Wonder and all of its spinoffs. <laughs> ninety six episodes. Oh wow, ninety six episodes. Woo! I mean, I, you can see it go down a dark road where the robot gets like out of control and starts murdering people. That's I mean, called Terminator, man. Any show will <laughs> be Uncle John too for the Avengers too. I don't John. think the uh, dude who's five is going to find that comforting. Well, you, we've grown up, so we all have new tastes. So, uh, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. If you grew up watching Small Wonder, you don't necessarily want it to be the same thing you watched when you were growing up. That'd be childish. All right, then. <laughs> then, then but then how I met your mother, how father is going to be how basically she murdered the father. And she's going to tell the kid how she murdered the father. And that's going to be the surprise ending of the show is the reason your father's not around is because I killed him, you little bee. And now I'm coming after you. Wow. Well, I mean, you want it dark. It, it got dark. And Vicky's going to be the, probably the one that killed everybody. And she'll be on every. <laughs> well, I mean. Uh. That would be great. I'm tall everybody. enough to be the child, so why why wouldn't I be the robot? Oh, and Small yeah. Wonder was dope. I used to have a crush on Robot Vicky Girl. How old was that girl? Well, if you're a kid, they, she I was probably know, like ten, 12. wasn't she? I don't yeah, know. She was pretty young, yeah. yeah like I'm 10, sorry, 11 don't, or 12 no, or so. thank you. I'm not going to talk about crushes on small 10-year-old robots. Well, if you're a 10-year-old and you're watching the show, I think it's okay to have a crush on another 10-year-old, BJ. I think when I was 10, did I have a crush on anybody when I was 10? Oh, I don't know. I didn't I did. know you, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thankfully. Well, I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't have no crush on no 10-year-old robot. I'll tell you yeah, that. All, all my kid crushes were uh, cartoon characters like Chitara. Yeah. Chitara was hot. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. I think you. How old were you guys when that was going on? I think you had to be like twelve. 30. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Fine. Uh, hey, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. In two thousand, who became the first Asian woman to host Saturday Night Live? Oh. Oh, uh, Charlie's Angels, uh, Lucy Liu. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I don't know why I'm specking the table. Uh, I know why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Vicky from Small Wonder, Lucy Liu. I think we need to just let you have a moment, sir. That's all I got to say. And while Steve is taking a moment, why don't you take a moment to uh, dial this number, 206-421-ROCK. You got a shot at beating Steve. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, my house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening.